how to get 99 percentile in dilr into first of all in dilr uh, the first step is to guarantee a 90th percentile into dilr scores roughly go like this you get one set right you're at 90 to 93 you get two set right you're at higher 99 99.3 plus typically and so my approach for dilr would be to say look at all four or look at one set second set third set the moment you see one set that you feel is in your zone take it and attack it and get it in the game plan to get to 99th percentile would be to get to 90th percentile in 20 minutes that's your game don't evaluate for 10 minutes and select your the set don't take the first set that comes into your zone scan the sets one thing seems to be your sweet spot attack that get five questions right 90th percentile in the bag you say look i'm through i've done this done this section well then when you go for the second one is when you need to be a little savvy suppose you have you feel like you have enough bandwidth to crack that completely you want to finish that you finish the first set within 20 minutes you have another 20 minutes and you feel like you're in the zone this is workable then hang in there if that is not the case suppose you have the first set getting it right has taken 28 minutes and then you have to take some chances then you have to be savvy about it you have to say look can i go from what choices are available to go on attack here can i hit theta and come here can i hit theta questions in this can i see the first two questions alone and do those decisions you have to take the easy route to 99.3 percentile clearly get one set right by 20 minutes get one more right by 38 minute take rest for two minutes attack quant after that that will be the template everything going fine your way method don't have this two set target at step one the most important thing in DILR is to get one set right, five questions in the bag, breathe easy, feel nice and confident, then take that energy into the second one. And sometimes it'll be magically, it'll be on fire. In 14 minutes, you'd have done one, put in the bag. Who is it that? That is there. You've cleared section cutoffs, you've got, you're getting 90th percentile, your path is clear. They're calling you from the IAMs. And then you say, look, I need to do, do one more. You have that wind behind you and then attack that. So you have to play for getting one right for sure. If that one right happens in 15 minutes, your 99 is guaranteed. You pick one more, get it right, you're through. Then you try gamble for something more. If it is 20 minutes, you still odds on to try one more set completed. If it is 30 minutes, and you finish one set. You're in a little bit of trouble. Then you have to gamble a little bit. You have to say, look, I look at the one which has shortest text, and therefore each question is a different thing. I'm not solving an entire grid and answering that. I take the context, look at the condition in the first question, try to attempt it. Look at the condition in the second question, try to attempt it. Third question, I have time, brilliant. I scan for theta, answer 3, 6 and 9, hope for the best. You have to take decisions. After, if you have done 30 minutes and you've done only one set, then you have to flip. You have to say, I'll select a pick and not look to complete the whole grid. I'll go for the set where it does look like there is no whole grid. For each question, I have to interpret some data, attack that and get it right. Typically, eight questions all right and you're at 99 or close about, close to that. So five in the bag and then you take a decision on, do I have enough gas in the tank to get another five in the bag? If that is not the case, then I'm gambling a little bit. So the mocks help you gamble better, take chances better. Tetas, questions where you don't have to solve the complete grid, going from answer key, limiting your choices, coming back to it, all those things you'll have to pick up. In, during this this mock journey so that should be a route to 99% best wishes for you.